okay good evening so let's start our today's class so this is lecture 20 on computer networks and uh, most probably this will be our last lecture okay but if uh, still few topics will be left out then i will take just one more class okay so i think it is last or second last class okay so we were studying tcp timers if you need to remember we were studying tcp timers okay and uh, let me show you the previous slide okay i think what has happened here oh ho just a second yes so yes so in the previous lecture itself we were discussing the tcp timers and time with timer i have covered keep alive timer i have covered persistence timer i think we already know i have told you in the previous classes also and uh, that whenever window size is zero okay so this is say client this is server or the, the, these are the two stations a and b okay a, a has sent some data and b has sent that window size is zero okay so now immediately persistent timer will start at a when persistent timer will expire then it will send probe packet probe packet okay and so on so i have told you this uh, also in the previous lectures only persistence timer is already completed acknowledgement timer it is also very simple acknowledgement timer means see this when a send some uh, you can say a segment to b then b will start ack timer okay now in this timer uh, no matter how many segments uh, b has received it will send one cumulative acknowledgement for all the segments that is ack timer okay and obviously timeout should be greater than ack timer okay ack timer will be smaller than timeout because if ack timer is more than timeout then obviously timeout will occur and they will unnecessarily keep on repeating the packets i think uh, it is very obvious i have told you that in data link layer also if you have any doubt you can ask me i will further expand it otherwise i will leave it here itself understood it sir you can go ahead okay okay then okay so next is timeout timer it is very important many times question have been asked so let me uh, show you that it is bit mathematical kind of thing so we will try to solve it okay so basically now we are left with only one timer that is timeout timer timeout timer okay so how this timeout timer will work first of all uh, i will talk about simple data data link layer in data link layer what we were doing so uh, so data link layer work from hop to hop or node to node okay hop to hop or node to node so obviously the tp will be what uh, distance divided by speed okay and and our timeout was nothing but timeout was nothing but 2 into tp time okay into tp and it was very easy to find and all these things were very easy at data link layer but at uh, a transport layer it will be very difficult why because between sender and receiver there might be many routers okay and we have to find queuing time processing time of each and every router i do not know how much uh, overburdened is this router and so on how much time it will take to forward the packet and so on so obviously uh, time out calculation will be very difficult at uh, uh, transport layer okay so at transport layer at transport layer uh, time out uh, finding time out it will be very difficult okay and moreover and moreover you might see that for example uh, say at 6 am in the morning when traffic is very less uh, one packet is sent from sender to receiver and receiver has sent us acknowledgement okay so here yeah, within say 10 millisecond you have received it so you might say okay just take 10 or 20 whatever way you want you can take as time out okay but whenever you are sending the uh, same packet at say 6 pm in the evening when there will be lot of traffic then obviously it might need 100 millisecond okay so even if you take 10 millisecond as time out or 20 millisecond as time out that will not going to work here for because it is 100 millisecond here so according to time it will be different okay so that is the very big problem at transport layer so that calculation of timeout will be very difficult okay so now uh, there are many solutions so let me tell you that uh, one by one the very first is basic algorithm take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide then 
Dental. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So now I am going to tell you the solution. Okay. So uh, this won't work. Okay. So uh, if we take some static time out, like a timer, like uh, we take ten millisecond or twenty millisecond, it won't work because from time to time it will keep on changing. Okay, according to traffic conditions and so on. So basic thing is that it is not so easy. So now we are going to study some uh, algorithms. So very first is basic algorithm. Okay, let me tell you that we will study three three things. First is basic algorithm. Next next is Jacobson's algorithm. Okay, and third is uh, Korn's modification. Okay, Korn's modification. So Korn's modification is for these two uh, for these two algorithms. Okay, Korn is a scientist name who has done some modifications. I will tell you that also. So three topics basically we have to study. Okay, so the very first is basic algorithm. Let me first give you small idea about what exactly basic algorithm is saying. Basic algorithm. Okay, basic algorithm. What it will say? It will say uh, tau n plus one is alpha t n plus one minus alpha tau n. Okay, so if you try to remember this same equation we have used in operating system when we were studying uh, uh, SJF shortest job first, and I have to I told you that how you will calculate the next burst. Okay, so it was the next burst, it was the actual burst, it was the expected burst, and so on. Nth expected burst, Nth actual burst, and n plus one -th burst. That will be predictive burst. So we have used this same equation in OS also. So this is not uh, this equation is not new to you. We have studied it, but now we will simply change the labeling. Okay, so uh, tau n uh, tau n is the expected nth RTT. Expected nth RTT that is round trip time. Okay, round trip time is nothing but two into T P. Okay, so this is this A to B going and coming. This is one RTT. Okay, so one packet has sent and one acknowledgement has come. So this is one RTT. So expected nth RTT that is uh, tau n. And can, okay, and roughly you can take it as two TP, but it uh, this two TP work at DLL. Okay, so forget about it at transport layer. We will simply say one packet go and one uh, and one acknowledgement come. That is RTT. So tau n is expected nth RTT. Okay, and TN is the actual nth RTT. What has happened? Okay, this is what you have expected, and this is what uh, has what exactly what has happened. Okay, so actual RTT, and now from these you will try to calculate n plus one -th. So this is actual n -th RTT. Okay, so what ha whatever you have expected, that was this. What exactly came, that was this. And from these two, you will try to calculate the next. That means n plus one -th expected obviously actual we cannot find <laughs> actually is the future we cannot see the future we can see just the present okay yeah so this will be n plus one -th, uh, expected rtt expected rtt okay so this is the basic equation uh, this is the basic algorithm okay yeah so now the question arises what will be your tau one that is the biggest question tau one that means what will be your first guess this is uh, simply guess na expected nth rtt so what will be your first guess or what will be your first expected rtt first expected rtt okay so there are many parameters for that we will not dig deep into it and so on but uh, i can simply say that it will be given in the question okay whatever is given in the question you can take it and how we will calculate it don't worry about it this won't be asked in gate it is not required okay it is way beyond the uh, gate syllabus so uh, there are many parameters from which we calculate it okay so the basic was very first guess or you can say the first expected rtt okay that will be the tau one okay yeah and generally generally alpha i think you already know that is the waiting factor waiting factor or weight factor and generally it is taken as 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay alpha will be taken as 0 0.5 and whatever they they what they can give uh, 0 0.9 0 0.5 0 0.2 and so on so i think you already know if alpha is equal to 0 in sjf i have already told you this uh, how to uh, visualize this equation if alpha is equal to 0 then whatever what you will say tau n plus 1 will be equal to tau n so whatever is the expected that will be your next okay and if alpha is equal to 1 then what uh, you will say tau n plus 1 tau n plus 1 that will be equal to tm that means whatever is the actual present that will be the next one okay so whatever ha happened presently that will happen in the future 
that is alpha is equal to one. If alpha is equal to zero means whatever you have expected, that will be your the next the next RTT. So I hope you have got it. So you can take snapshot of this. Then I will try to solve a small numerical. Then you will get more clarity. Take the snapshot. Done. Okay. So in the question, uh, I am giving you IRTT. That means initial round trip time, and that is uh, given as ten millisecond. Okay. So this is uh, I IRTT. That is initial I uh, initial round trip time, or you can say expected, or that is nothing but your tau one. I have told you this will be given in the question. So IRTT is given to you in the question itself. That is nothing but your tau tau one. IRTT means initial round trip time, or you can say expected round trip time or first expected round trip time. Whatever they want, they can give. Okay, so IRTT is ten millisecond. That is tau one. Yeah, and now uh, uh, what will be the timeout? Timeout. You should remember that it will be two into RTT. Okay, we will simply double it to RTT. So it should it will be twenty millisecond. So I am expecting that uh, timeout should be twenty millisecond. Okay, and uh, let us suppose actual RTT, actual round trip time comes out to be fifteen millisecond. Okay, fifteen millisecond is the actual round trip time which has just come. So uh, I will simply say going and coming. Okay, so I have expected it to be twenty millisecond, but actually it comes in fifteen milliseconds only. Okay, so it has come in fifteen milliseconds only. Okay, this is the basic scenario uh, till now. So now uh, I I will say what will be the next expected RTT that is tau two. So now question is you want to find the tau two. Okay, so what will be the tau two? And and they are giving you alpha is equal to point five. That means weighting factor is point five. So tau two will be nothing but point five. That means alpha. Okay, let let me write it. Let me write it first. Tau two is equal to alpha into t one. Plus me one minus alpha into tau one. So what will be the value? You just put it. You will get the answer. Point five into t one. T one was the actual whatever it has come. Actual is fifteen. So I will take here fifteen plus one minus alpha. One minus point five is point five multiplied by what was the expected? It was uh, expected to be ten. Uh, okay, given I R T T is ten na. So ten. So what will be our answer now? Uh, seven point five plus five, twelve point five. So next expected is twelve point five. Okay. So next expected uh, RTT is twelve point five. So I will simply assume that okay. So next uh, uh, RTT, or you can say uh, uh, you can say next timeout. I should properly say next timeout. let me use a different next time out that will be 2 multiplied by 12.5 it comes out to be 25 okay so next expected is 25 obviously uh, initially we have imagined 20 and next i am expecting it should be 25 okay and let us suppose uh, actual rtd comes to be 20 Okay. Let us suppose let A R T T comes out to be twenty. So are you getting it? So we have imagined that uh, uh, the packet go and come. It should be in twenty five, but actually it came in twenty only. It came in twenty only. Okay. So let uh, so next time out whatever we have expected it should be twenty five. But actually, packet come in twenty. Okay, so expected was twenty five, but it came in twenty. So now I will try to find tau three. That means the next expected uh, uh, timeout. Okay, next expected uh, RTT. Sorry, tau is RTT, na? Ha. So next expected RTT. So uh, tau three will be point five. Alpha is point five. So point five multiplied by yes. Uh, I think some disturbance is coming. Yeah. Okay. So tau three will be a point five into so whatever we have expected. Okay. So let me let me put the formula. Tau three will be what? Alpha into t two plus me one minus alpha into tau two. So alpha alpha is point five 
so 0.5 into t2 so what is the actual rtt 20 plus may 1 minus alpha that is 0.5 into 12.5 expected was 12.5 okay yes so what we have got finally our answer will be you can calculate it i am just giving you the answer 16.25 you will get it 16.25 16.25 16.25 so this is the tau 3 okay so now i will say uh, your expected timeout will be what you will say next timeout next timeout will be 16.25 multiplied by 2 that is 32.5 millisecond okay so now you can uh, and let us suppose so our expectations was 32.5 millisecond but let us suppose it comes in just 10 okay so packet has sent and it will come okay and uh, total expected was 32.5 but packet came in just 10 okay yeah so next timeout was 2 into rtt that means 32.5 it was uh, expected but actually packet came in just 10 millisecond so i will simply say artt actual so actual uh, 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 actual round trip time comes out to be just 10 millisecond okay so now what will be our tau 4 that means next uh, rtt so it will be 0 0.5 into uh, so tau uh, tau 4 okay i think now i think i should not write the formula again and again tau 4 will be what oh, sorry mm, tau 4 will be what alpha into tau 3 plus 1 minus alpha into tau 3 so just put it you will get the answer 0 0.5 into t3 the, uh, it is nothing but 10 plus may 0 0.5 into expected that is 32.5 so you just solve it finally we will get it to be 13.125 okay yeah so next time out so next time out will be uh 13 point expected now next expected time out will be 13.125 multiplied by 2 26.25 okay so and so on i think now it is very obvious uh, everyone can calculate it very easily so i will put everything on the one slide so that you can take snapshot okay and shortcut i will tell you now so i have done it uh, slowly so that you get clarity okay and now i will try to give you the uh, the direct question whatever that will be asked in gate okay so they will simply say artt1 artt1 is 15 I have just taken see this actual round trip time it was 15 then 20 and then 10 na? so ARTT 1 is 15 then ARTT 2 ARTT 2 is 20 then they will say ARTT 3 that is coming to be 10 okay and uh, they will say find irtt4 okay so it is just terminology okay you should remember it irtt means initial round trip time 4 that means they just want to calculate tau 4 irtt tau 1 so irtt4 it, it they just want to calculate tau 4 okay yeah and uh, they will give you uh, tau 1 also irtt is given to you that is 10 millisecond irtt1 is given to you that is 10 so how you will calculate tau 4 tau 4 will be nothing but t3 by 2 plus my t2 by 2 square plus my t1 by 2 cube plus my tau 1 by 2 cube and i think i should not explain this how i have got this by shortcut i have told you this in when i was when we were discussing shortest job first algorithm okay so you just keep on back substituting the values you will get the answer see this from the equation itself you just keep on back substituting you just put the value of tau n and so on so you will get this uh, as the answer whatever i'm getting here so it is just like that the, the previous one by two the next previous by two square next previous by two cube and so on okay so i will simply put the value and get the answer t3 t3 is what 10 so 10 by 2 plus uh, artt2 is 20 so 20 by 4 plus first was 15 15 by 8 plus 10 by 8 tau 1 was uh, 10 uh, that's why so you just calculate it 
and uh, you will get it as 13.125 you can check it out yourself so this is the proof that th this our shortcut is working perfectly okay in sgf i have told you how you will calculate it if you have any doubt i will just give you small hint tau n plus one is nothing but alpha tn plus me one minus alpha tau n nah? so you just put the value of tau n so alpha tn plus me one minus alpha into alpha tn minus one plus me one minus alpha tau n minus one okay so when you will open the bracket alpha tn plus me one minus alpha into alpha tn minus one plus me one minus alpha whole square tau n minus one so now if you put the value of alpha to be uh, one by two that is 0.5 alpha to be one by two then you will what you will get tn by two plus me tn minus one by uh, one by two into one by two two square and so on this is what we have got it okay so uh, tau four will be t3 by two plus me t2 by two square t1 by two cube tau one by two cube and so on okay yes so you can take snapshot of this i will jump to the next slide now <coughs> yes if you have any doubt you can ask me done sir okay done. okay so uh, next uh, next is jacobson's algorithm so this was what uh, this was your uh, basic algorithm next is jacobson's algorithm Jacobson algorithm. Okay, so what Jacobson is saying? Timeout is nothing but four into d plus me r t t. Okay, so uh, uh, in basic, I have simply taken see this the timeout. I have taken two into r t t. Okay, timeout was just two into r t t. But now they are saying four into d plus r t t. It is no longer two into r t t. It will be four into d plus r t t. Now question is, what is this d? D is nothing but deviation. Okay, so d is nothing but your deviation. Deviation means uh, what uh, difference between expected and actual. Okay, so whatever you have expected and whatever you have got, so you just take the difference of that. That will be the deviation. Okay, so expected minus actual, and it will be always positive quantity. So you will take mod of it. Okay, expected minus actual. You just take mod. You will get the answer of deviation. Okay, so for example, expected was fifteen and actual comes out to be ten. So you will take mod, you will get answer as five. Deviation is five. Okay, so like this we will calculate. Okay. So now uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, I I will simply solve a question. Okay, and we will take the same equation. Okay, so for R T T also and for deviation also we will take the same equation. Okay, so to calculate next R T T. So calculate next R T T same equation tau n plus one alpha T n plus me one minus alpha tau n. Okay, and uh, to calculate the deviation. Okay, so next deviation same equation tau n plus one is equal to alpha T n plus me one minus alpha tau n. Tau n is the expected, T n is the actual, and plus one is the next expected. Same, same. Okay, so same equation we are going to use. So next R T T and next deviation, same equation. Okay, so I will solve one question so that you get more clarity. Take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So next, is, so question is I R T T is given to you. I R T T is at ten millisecond. Then uh, initial deviation is given to you. That is five. So first of all, I will calculate the timeout. So what will be the timeout? Timeout will be four into d plus r t t. So four into five plus r t t. That means ten. So it comes out to be thirty milliseconds. So timeout is thirty. And now let us assume let actual a r t t actual round trip time comes out to be twenty. So same scenario. Okay, going coming. You have expected it to be thirty. But actually, it comes out to be twenty. Okay, so let a r t t comes out to be twenty. So now I will try to calculate the actual deviation. Actual deviation will be what you have expected thirty, and it comes out to be twenty. So it is nothing but ten. So how you have got ten? Ten is nothing but your uh, uh, okay thirty minus twenty. That is nothing but ten. Okay, so actual deviation will be ten milliseconds. 
okay yes so and 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 more precisely more precisely you can calculate it like this also uh, actual deviation will be irtt minus artt okay so you, you just calculate in terms of no need to calculate in terms of time out you can calculate it in terms of irtt also so irtt minus artt mod you just take it okay so initial uh, round trip time was 10 and actual comes out to be 20 so difference is 10 so that is nothing but actual deviation is 10 okay so now for rtt i will try to calculate so i will try to calculate for rtt so tau 2 tau 2 i am calculating it for rtt that will be 0.5 into alpha into tn i am just taking alpha to be 0.5 only nothing is given then you will take alpha to be 0.5 okay yeah so tau t will be 0.5 into uh what is the actual and what was the expected so initially expectations was 10 plus may 0.5 actual it comes out to be 20 so what will be our answer 5 plus 10 that is 15 so tau 2 comes out to be 15 okay and what about my deviation tau 2 for deviation it will be 0.5 into initial assumed was 5 but actual it is coming to be 10 so what will be our answer uh, our answer will be 7.5 now 5 plus 2.5 that is 7.5 so timeout timeout will be what expected timeout expected 4 into d plus rtt so what it will be deviation is what 7.5 rtt rtt i have just calculated it to be 15 so it comes out to be 45 millisecond okay so 45 was expected expected timeout but let us assume let us assume it comes out to be 30 let actual rtt comes out to be 30 Okay, 45 was expected, but 30 came. So, what will be our uh, new, you can say, the uh, deviation? Uh, sorry, actual deviation. Actual deviation is 45 minus 30, that is 15. Okay, actual deviation comes out to be 45 minus uh, 30, that is 15. Okay, I think uh, you have got it. And, and you can take it like this also. Uh, RTT expected was 15 but actual rtt comes to be 30 so you can take it like this also two ways you can take whatever way you want 30 minus 15 that is it comes out to be 15 so actual deviation comes out to be 15 okay so now now i will try to calculate uh, tau 3 okay yes so tau 3 for rtt okay tau 3 for rtt it will be 0 0.5 into so actual uh, 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 see this actual was uh, actual was 30 na? 30 and expected was 15 this was 15 so it comes out to be 22.5 okay and uh, let us suppose the deviation tau 3 for deviation it will be 0.5 into 15 plus may 0 0.5 into 7.5 okay so 7.5 deviation and actual deviation is 15 so 7.5 and 15 so it comes out to be 11.25 okay so now what will be the timeout timeout will be 4 into d plus rtt same formula so 4 into deviation is what 11.25 11.25 plus my rtt rtt is your uh, what rtt is 22.5 so it comes out to be you can calculate yourself 67.5 okay yeah so now <coughs> let us assume uh, actual rtt comes out to be 10 okay so what will be the actual deviation actual deviation will be see this whatever you have expected expected was 22.5 but actual came to be 10 so what will be our answer uh, actual deviation will be 22.5 minus 10 that is 
okay yes so now i think uh, you can calculate yourself tau 4 okay just just one more just one more okay yeah so tau 4 it comes out to be 0 0.5 now uh, now i will pick up the speed so that i think you have got it so 0 0.5 into 22.5 plus my 0 0.5 into 10 okay Ac uh, expected was 22.5 but actually is 10 yeah so what will be our answer our answer will be 16.25 you can check it out yourself okay Millisecond 16.25 millisecond that is for RTT. Okay, and what about deviation tau 4 for the deviation? Deviation will be 0.5 into 11.25 and it comes out to be 12.5. So 11.875.5 into 11.25. Why 11.25? See this deviation okay and actual comes out to be 12.5 so a 0.5 into 11.25 plus 0.5 into 12.25 that is 11.875 so what will be the timeout just last timeout 4 into d plus my rtt so 4 into deviation uh, it is 11.875 plus my rtt rtt is what x 16.25 so you just calculate it 63.75 will be our answer that's it okay so i think it's more than sufficient so you can take snapshot till this point done 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 okay okay so la uh, this is left out you can take this also done sir okay so that's it so this is all about your uh, uh, basic algorithm and jacobson's algorithm okay so that last is uh, cons modification that is very simple cons modification so what cons modification is saying so for example uh, neither basic algorithm nor jacobson none of them is talking about what if acknowledgement does not came for example uh, we have sent a frame uh, sorry we have sent a segment and acknowledgement has came so both are assuming the same thing that means you send a segment and acknowledgement came but what if this acknowledgement is lost so for example you ha you have uh, assumed that timeout to be 10 okay but in within 10 acknowledgement does not come or uh, acknowledgement is lost then what you will do both of these algorithm they are not talking about it i have not assumed any case where acknowledgement is lost see, see this i am simply saying uh, yeah, we were expecting 30 but in 20 came okay and here also see this that uh, we were expecting 2015 came and so on everywhere i was talking like that so what if that is lost so that is talked by cons modification so it is it is a solution is very simple you will simply double the, 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 the double the timeout okay so if you take irtt irtt is 10 and uh, if uh, within 10 uh, you can say acknowledgement does not came so timeout you will take to be 20 so next timeout will be 20 now even in that acknowledgement does not came then it will be 40 timeout will be 40 and so on so that means timeout will keep on doubling itself whenever the acknowledgement is lost so i will simply write cons modification is saying if ack is lost then keep on doubling the timeout keep on doubling the timeout that's it okay this is cons modification okay so that's it so uh, and just one more topic is left out that is silly, win silly window syndrome in tcp and then we will start the application layer take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide done sir okay so next is silly window syndrome silly window syndrome okay so what is this so the, uh, so there are three cases for silly window syndrome the very first case is this is sender and this is receiver so so receiver has uh, sent say uh, window size to be 1000 okay so receiver has sent window size to be 1000 and uh, why because 1000 byte 
यू कैन से बफर वॉज देयर ओके और और बाइट बफर वॉज फ्री विद द रिसीवर दैट्स वाई रिसीवर हैज एडवर्टाइज विंडो साइज टू बी वन थाउजेंड नाउ लेट एस एज्यूम सेंडर हैज सेंड वन थाउजेंड बाइट ऑफ डेटा नाउ सिंस इट हैज सेंड वन थाउजेंड बाइट ऑफ डेटा सो दिस बफर विल बी फुल this buffer is full so uh, uh, so receiver will advertise window size to be zero why because buffer is full so now the moment it send window size to be zero persistence timer will start i have told you in the previous classes persistence timer will start and after that it will send just one byte just one byte of data which is known as prob packet okay so it will send one prob packet and then again it is sending window size to be zero then again it is sending one byte of data After persistent timer expires, it will send one byte of data. Then it will send window size to be zero, and so on. It is keep on repeating. So this is nothing but silly window syndrome problem. That means what to just send one. Why we are calling it a silly window? Silly window means window has just reduced to some silly size. That means this size is very small. And why we are calling it a silly size? Because see this uh, segment will contain data and then header, transport and then header network. Okay, so header transport is say twenty byte. Header network is also twenty byte. Now, if you are sending just one byte of data, then you are sending forty byte of overhead. So, isn't it silly thing? Whatever you are doing, you just to send just one byte, you are sending forty byte of overhead, and game is not yet over. Acknowledgement will also come. Acknowledgement will also contain forty byte header transport and header network. Okay, so forty plus forty eighty eighty byte overhead to send just one byte. Isn't it silly thing? that's why we are calling it a silly window syndrome so this was the first case okay second case second case will be sender will send just one uh, sender is sending just one byte of data and receiver is sending acknowledgement then sender is sending just one byte of data and it is sending acknowledgement and so on why it is doing so why sender is sending just one byte of data i am assuming that sender is very slow sender is very slow that means uh, you can say you are typing something and and you are taking lot of time to just press a key on the keyboard okay so uh, i think uh, so you can imagine that you do not know the typing you do not know where is a b c d in the keyboard and you just uh, try to find where is a and uh, whenever you find a you just hit it and the moment you hit the a so it will send just one byte of data and then acknowledgement will came and so on so that is what sender is very slow if sender is very slow it is sending just one byte of data acknowledgement then one byte of data acknowledgement and so on this is nothing but your again silly window syndrome because window is very small okay you are sending very small amount of data okay what about the third case so first case is uh, uh, persistence timer kind of thing okay so uh, just uh, prop packets so second scenario is sender is slow third case will be what receiver is slow okay so only three cases are there so third case will be uh, first case is persistent timer wala uh, thing then sender is very slow and then receiver is very slow receiver is very slow so if receiver is slow what we so uh, what i want to say is so for example uh, receiver has sent window size to be 1000 okay and now sender has sent the segment of 1000 okay uh, so sender has sent say 1000 byte data 1000 byte data okay or or you can imagine that triple uh, 9 okay you just imagine that uh, uh, a triple nine byte uh, data has been sent by sender so initially 1000 byte was free now only one byte is free rest everything is occupied so it will send window size to be one so obviously sender has to send just one byte of data okay when it will send one byte of data then its buffer will be full and let us assume only two bytes are transferred to the application layer so now window size remaining is 2 so it will send window size to be 2 so it will send only two byte of data then assume it is sending window size to be 3 it is sending just three byte of data and so on okay so very small data you are sending that is again a problem so first problem is persistence timer problem that means uh, 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 receiver side buffer is full okay it is uh, sending uh, window size to be 0 after persistence timer expire it is sending prop packet of one byte it is again sending window size to be zero then again it is sending one prop packet it is again sending window size to be zero and so on so just one one byte segment is sending second is sender is very slow 
and the third scenario is receiver is very slow so these are the three scenarios of silly window syndrome so you just have to remember silly window syndrome means window is reduced to some silly size okay window is reduced to some silly size okay so overheads are more overheads are more and data sent is less that is the basic scenario okay yes this is silly window syndrome that's it so our work is over uh, your you can say transport layer is over now we are going to start the application layer okay yes so let me start the application layer you can take this snapshot i will jump to the next slide done sir okay next is application layer okay so it is uh, yeah hello so previously yeah. pe okay okay yes take the snapshot uh, sir ye jo first case hai mm hmm sir window size 0 ka acknowledgement receiver se aayega to ye 1 byte jo sender ke sender sender ke taraf bheja gaya sir ye accept karega nahi nahi karega accept because window size is 0 buffer is full uh, in the previous lecture itself i have covered this case actually last class sir <laughs> maine miss kar diya okay no problem you you can watch that lecture and if you still face any difficulty you can ask me okay 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 hmm okay. yes and uh, obviously you can guess na window size is zero buffer is already full if it is sending one byte of data then how it can accept there is no room here nothing no space is there it cannot accept it it will be simply rejected okay yeah. because there is no space <clears throat> okay so now we are going to start the application layer okay so in application layer we have to study a uh, few protocols one is dns domain name system next we are going to study is uh, your uh, tcp or or first we will study email okay email in email we will study smtp pop3 imap4 imap4 okay then we will study ftp and Hello. then we will study http yes sir in, in application layer sir there are three layer no sir uh, application layer presentation and session layer yeah uh, yeah so that was uh, in uh, your osi model okay so we are studying okay. this tcp ip okay. model it will contain yeah. only one layer yes so in application and we will not dig deep into the things because uh, if you try to learn properly then we uh, you have to uh, you can say give around 100 to 120 hours to study this layer properly it is very big layer okay lot of things are there rather and to uh, to understand networking subject very precisely this layer is very important but it is very vast and gate is not asking those detailed questions and for each and every see this this on http you will find 1000 page book and not even one book there are multiple books for ftp also there are multiple books okay so if if you have more interest you can study that in your mtech courses okay so we will just give you small idea here okay so we have to study these four protocols okay and uh, many times questions have been asked and they will ask direct questions i will simply tell you whatever questions they will ask okay yes so first is dns that is domain name system take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide then okay domain name system okay what is this so domain name system is uh, see actually uh, mm, see each computer connected to internet has an ip address okay whatever see this is the internet there are the computers so each computer connected to internet has an ip address so now in order to access any information on this computer see for example you are here and you want to access information on this computer so you should know the ip address of this computer if you do not know the ip address then you cannot access the information that is very basic point 
now human brain cannot remember the addresses addresses means what uh, numbers human brain cannot remember number so uh, human brain can remember names okay so uh, so solution was made that was a very simple solution when in early days of internet they made a file called host.txt file this file simply contain two columns name and ip for example a is name given to some ip address b is the name given to some ip address c and so on it is not abc you can give your name also like uh, a cisco okay there then some ip address and so on like this so names and ip addresses this was the small file okay and this file was stored on each and every computer on the, which was connected to internet each computer on internet okay and uh, to make the connection user will simply type the name okay now from this host.txt file uh, you, you will get the ip address and then corresponding connection was made so this was the initial solution whatever was designed so host.txt file was there and on each and every computer this file was stored so whenever some uh, computer wants to make connection with some other computer they will simply type the name and this name was internally converted to ip address and that's how connection was made but as the internet evolved more and more computers were connected to internet and uh, this host.txt file maintenance was very costly okay so there were many computers so obviously for each and every computer name and ip address you keep on in this text file and this text file you have to store in each and every computer that was very uh, you can say tedious task and moreover uh, daily on daily basis many many computers were uh, attached to the internet so this file was changing on a very faster rate so this changing was also creating problem so now uh, uh, you can say internet people want permanent solution for this and then domain name system was designed okay yes yeah, so so you can consider it just like a phone book okay so in phone whatever you do you uh, you just type the name okay and then you just uh, press the calling button and call goes to the person and internally uh, phone number will be linked na okay same is the scenario here okay but uh, since uh, size of internet increases this size of this host.txt file also increases and it was impossible to make the changes okay yes so better solution what is the better solution uh, let me tell you that take the snapshot then then sir hmm so better solution is this is very huge file so you just divide it into multiple parts okay and each part will be stored on one computer okay so divide this host.txt file into multiple parts and each part will be stored on multiple computers and moreover the information which is stored on this computer that will be copied on to other computers also just to provide the fault tolerance for example if this computer goes down then who will keep record of this so there are multiple computers which will keep the record okay so basically we are following but distributed database approach so this question has been asked in gate uh, they will ask direct question that is the beauty of application layer okay so direct theoretical question will be asked so they have asked this dns is based on centralized or distributed approach obviously it is distributed database approach distributed database approach because the entire information is kept on multiple computer that means but uh, why we are calling it a distributed because entire information is entire information is distributed among multiple computers okay and uh, and moreover uh, if some part is stored on one computer it will be copied on to multiple computers just to provide the fault tolerance and whatever computer is nearest to you you can query that computer okay whatever computer is nearest to you and moreover if you are maintaining multiple copies so uh, this on this computer there will be uh, uh, entire load will not come into the onto this computer okay so uh, imagine like uh, millions of users are requesting the same computer that will create problem so you have uh, kept uh, the the information on multiple computer so that load can load can be distributed okay yes and uh, yeah, and one or one or two more points are coming to my mind the very first point is it uses distributed database approach okay second second is uh, since it is application layer protocol so at transport layer it has to use some protocol it will use udp <coughs> udp at transport layer okay and third important point is port number you have to remember port number is 53 direct question i have been asked you uh, uh, dns uses udp at transport layer and port number is 
ओके वाई यू डी पी इट इज वेरी सिंपल ना यू जस्ट यू विल रिक्वेस्ट वट इज द आई पी एड्रेस कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग टू द नेम एंड एंड द कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग कंप्यूटर विल रिप्लाई यू सो रिक्वेस्ट एंड रिप्लाई रिस्पॉन्स जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट एंड रिप्लाई सो फॉर दैट यू हैव यू डी पी ओके टीसीपी इज यूज वेन लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन इज सेंड फ्रॉम वन सिस्टम टू अनदर वी आर नॉट सेंडिंग लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन वी आर जस्ट सेंडिंग अ क्वेरी एंड वी आर गेटिंग अ रिस्पॉन्स फॉर दैट ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू टाइप गूगल डब्ल्यू 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 dot google dot com okay so this is url whatever you have typed internally it will be converted to ip address and how this will be converted this it will be done by dns okay so domain name system so the so uh, so you just want to find ip address corresponding to this url or uh, okay so for that dns is used and it is very small amount of information na huh? that's why udp is used okay and one more thing i want to tell you that uh, since we have kept this information on a, a small part of the file on one server and you have uh, shared uh, the file with multiple servers so obviously this server will copy this entire file to do this so here large amount of information is shared from here to here large amount of information is shared so here we will use tcp so it is very very important point that dns will use both udp also and tcp also udp for just query okay and tcp to transfer the information transfer info from server to server info from one server to another server okay it will use tcp and udp is just used for query like what is the ip address for this google.com okay so i hope you have got it so it will use both and port number used is 53 you should remember it Okay, so this has been asked in gate. In match the following many times question has been asked. You should you have to remember it. DNS uses port number fifty three and which protocol at transport layer UDP and uh, more mostly UDP is used, but TCP is used rarely when file is transferred. Big big files are transferred from server to server. In that case, TCP will be used. Okay, take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done. Done. Okay. So the small small terms we should know namespace. Namespace is what? So these are the IP addresses and these are the names which are given. So whatever names are given to the IP addresses, set of all these names are nothing but the namespace. Okay. So for example, in worst scenario, I will take say two part thirty two IP addresses are possible because IP addresses of thirty two bits, and each IP address is given a unique name. Then total namespace will uh, namespace will contain two power thirty two names, not more than that. The total number of names possible are infinite. Now, now you can make names of one word, two word, three word, or uh, sorry, one letter, two letter, three letter, four letter, five letter, and so on, infinite names. But only two power thirty two we you will take. So all these. So I will simply say set of names which are given to some IP addresses. These are known as namespace. Okay. So I hope you have got it. So all these unique names are known as namespace. Okay. Next is types of namespace. Take, take the snapshot. Done, sir. Okay. Next is types of namespace. so there are two types of namespace one is known as flat namespace flat and another is hierarchical flat namespace and hierarchical namespace flat namespace means there is uh, no relation okay that means uh, first uh, ip address name is xyz next is a b c next is cisco next is gate okay next is amit and so on okay so there is no relation between the names so you just give arbitrary name to each and every ip address that is flat namespace next is hierarchical hierarchical means there will be some relation for example uh, you can say name will have multiple parts so the first part is the type of organization type of organization that is the first part okay for example organization can be uh, commercial organization so for that you will use dot com okay non profitable organization you will use org okay if a, a website is of india then you will use in like amazon.in amazon.in means it is in india okay amazon.us it means for us and so on so first is the type of organization 
okay next is the name of organization like you will say cisco okay so next in in the cisco you can have multiple departments for example sales department then you will say sales and in sales you have say one computer xyz so this is the domain name of xyz computer that means xyz so you will say uh, there is one commercial organization called cisco and in cisco we have a department called sales and in sales department we have a computer called xyz so which is better obviously hierarchical namespace is better flat namespace is not better okay so now how this hierarchical namespace uh, are uh, you can say is designed and so on let me tell you that take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay done oh, okay yes so uh, there is a rooted tree like structure okay so here we have a root and this uh there are multiple childs of this root okay so we have a tree tree form okay so now i am just telling you how this hierarchical namespace are uh, given okay yes yeah, so uh, so we have a inverted root uh, inverted tree okay that is known as uh, domain name space okay i am telling you domain name space so what is domain name space domain name space will give you idea about how these hierarchical name spaces are designed okay so domain name space is inverted tree it is inverted tree why we are calling it as inverted because in tree root is at the bottom okay and uh, here we have branches but uh, we are making inverted tree na root is at the top in data structure algorithm whatever you are studying that is inverted trees only because root is at the top actually root is should be at the bottom we are studying inverted tree okay so in top level we are having say arpa okay then we have com edu that means for educational institution org that means for non profitable organization then we can have say in for india us for usa and so on okay so broadly we have divided into three category first is arpa category that is for inverse lookup don't worry i will tell you about what is this inverse lookup and so on second is it uh, organ uh, type of organization okay whatever is uh, that is known as uh, generic domains generic domains which will give you the type of commercial organization educational uh, 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 non profitable organization and so on this is these are known as generic domains okay and these are known as country specific domains or country domain okay and this arpa is used for uh, inverse lookup which we, which we call it as inverse domain okay let me write it properly we will call it as inverse domain okay yes so now i will simply say so in in dot com i will say we have cisco and here we will have sales and here we have xyz okay so what i will say uh, domain name of see this each and every uh, you can say node is given some label okay so this is uh, a label of the root is nothing so you you will call it as null okay null is the label of the root node null nothing okay yeah so uh, label of this node is xyz this node is sales this node is cisco this node is com okay and uh, label of root is null null means nothing okay so what is the domain name now i tell you the domain name so domain name of this node will be xyz you will separate by dot okay xyz dot then above so you you just go above till root then sales dot then cisco dot then com dot and then uh, root label root label is null so you will put it nothing here so i will say x y z dot sales dot cisco dot com dot you have to apply dot here okay this is the domain name of x y z what is the domain name of this this node this node domain name will be obviously this part oops it will create problem so let me write it so i will write sales so uh, first uh, note down the label of this node then dot then cisco dot then com and then dot and what about this cisco 
dot com dot and so on. Okay, so this is how we have designed it. Okay, so I hope you have got it. So now domain names are of two types. One are known as fully qualified, another is known as partially qualified. Okay, so the uh, whatever I have written here, these all are fully qualified domain name. Why fully qualified? Because from the node I have started and I have gone till root. From node, if I go till root and I will write all the labels, that is known as fully qualified domain name. Okay, but uh, uh, if we do not go till root, that is known as partially qualified domain name. Okay, so for example, if uh, if I write for X Y Z, if I write X Y Z dot sales. So this is the partially qualified domain name for X Y Z. Okay, so if starting from node I reach till root, that is known as fully qualified domain name. Let me write it. Domain name is of two types: fully qualified domain name and partially qualified domain name. Fully qualified means go till root. Go till root. And here we will not go till root. That is partially qualified domain name. So go till root. How you will uh, know that we have gone till root? In the end, we should have a dot. If in the end we have a dot, that means uh, we are going till root. Okay, that is fully qualified domain name. Okay, so I hope you have got it. Hmm. Now I will tell you a small introduction about inverse domain. Okay, what is this inverse domain? That is ARPA, na ARPA. ARPA actually initially it was known as Advanced Research Project Agency when in internet was developed it was known as Advanced Research Project Agency okay but now here here this ARPA actually means address and routing parameter area okay yeah so what is a reverse lookup or you can say inverse domain see this actually dns is used for converting domain name domain name to ip address that is the basic aim of dns but if you want to do the reverse operation if you have ip and you want to convert it into domain name or you want to map it to domain name okay if you have a domain name you want to map it to ip address you are using dns if you have an ip and you want to map it with the domain name then you will use inverse lookup that is arpa okay so here arpa will be used okay yes so this is all about arpa hmm Okay, so now I will tell you that uh, this is the entire tree. So this tree is very big. Okay, so how this entire information will be stored? Okay, so for that I have told you there are many servers. Let me tell you that ab uh, about what are the types of servers and all. Take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Then done. Okay, so now question arises: This huge tree that is known as domain name space. So how this domain name space is stored? How domain name space is stored? So obviously for that we have servers. Okay. Now servers are of two types. One is known as non-authoritative server. Non authoritative non authoritative server and another is known as authoritative servers okay non authoritative and authoritative so non non authoritative means what the, uh, they have no authority that means what they do not have any dns database no dns database Okay, and let me tell you one more thing. The part of the tree which is stored on a uh, on a server that is known as zone. What is zone? Part of tree stored on the server. Okay, and it is the continuous part. 
okay so for example uh, i have just made a tree like this so if you want to store then you will store this entire part like this or you store this entire part like this okay but you cannot store uh, this part and this part in some server no continuous part you will store that is what i have told you this is nothing but zone zone is nothing but part of tree stored on the server and it is nothing but the continuous part so non authoritative server means there is no dns database so oh, oh, why we are calling them a server because there is no dns database here so they are just like agents for example you want to uh, uh, you, you uh, okay so let us take a real life example uh, you want uh, driving lessons okay so you will go to some agent okay so agent will help you na so like you want driving lessons you will go to some agent now agent do not have any authority to give you driving lessons he will contact with the agency agency will give him and then he will give the driving lessons to you so same is the scenario here these non authoritative servers are just like agents okay so whenever they receive some query from some computer so they do not have any database they will simply forward the query to some other uh, server from that server they will get the reply and then they will send you the reply okay so these are just like agents so they do not have any dns database yeah but they have cache so in cache memory they will store the request okay so you have requested what is the uh, what is the ip address of google.com so they will temporarily store in in the cache okay so the uh, for cache to temporarily store the uh, domain uh, uh, you can say uh, query temporary store ip addresses okay that is non authoritative okay next is authoritative authoritative means what they have authority they have authority means they will store dns database okay and they will store dns database uh and non authority server since they have cache memory they will temporarily store ip addresses so uh, and they do not have any database so they they are also known as cache only server cache only server okay yes and authority server they have database so now this authority server since they are having database they are of two types one is known as primary another is known as secondary so i have told you na uh, see this in in this slide i have told you so this part is stored in the server and here we we have maintained multiple copies okay so the actual part where it is stored that is known as primary and uh, and the copy of uh, this primary are nothing but the secondary okay so obviously uh, on this uh, this primary is responsible for creation or deletion or edi uh, or you want to change some data uh, or something like that that will be done on the primary okay secondary are simply copy of it so whenever there is a change on the primary uh, it will be transferred to all the secondary okay so primary is the one which is actually storing the database secondary are simply maintaining copy of the database okay so let me give you a small uh, idea actually it is not so important that's why i'm not uh, digging deep into all these topics for the, uh, because it will simply waste our time okay so primary means they are actually storing the database so it is responsible for generating maintaining and updating it is used uh, uh, responsible for generating updating generating updating and maintaining of the zone file maintaining of zone file zone is i have told you a continuous part of the tree okay is yes, what is secondary the so secondary is simply copy of primary copy of primary so obviously they cannot generate update or maintain the zone file okay so they can't generate update or maintain the zone file okay they can't do anything okay so whenever primary will do some updation it will send it to secondary station whenever 
updation is done at primary it will be given to all secondary okay so obviously i think you have got got it for one zone file there will be only one primary and there will be many secondary okay because uh, we cannot have multiple primary na multiple primary means what they will uh, multiple servers will try to edit the file that is not possible so only for one zone file let me write it in another color for one zone file one primary and many secondary servers okay so i think you have got it yes so next is very important that is working of dns i will tell you that also you can take a snapshot of this then i will jump to the next slide then sir okay next is working of dns on this topic questions have been asked in gate so uh, for example let us suppose we type www.google.com in the web browser so first of all what we will do the web browser will convert okay uh, rather uh, this web browser this is uh, in the web browser we have uh, uh, typed this okay now this web browser will pass this domain uh, this url this is url na hmm. this url will be passed to a uh, program called resolver resolver is nothing but the dns client okay so from that you have got the idea that dns is based on client server model dns is based on client server model okay okay now this what resolver will do resolver see first of all uh, is this fully qualified domain name or partially qualified domain name it is not ending with dot so it is partially qualified domain name it is not fully qualified so resolver will first of all convert it into fully qualified domain name so it will add a dot with it www dot google dot com dot okay so this is now fully qualified domain name okay and this resolver will have uh, some cache memory okay it is a program na so uh, rather it is a process in your computer so obviously it will be having some memory so in that memory we will call it as a cache memory in that memory it will first check whether this uh, www.google.com dot uh, for this domain name i am having ip address or not so it, it will first check it in in the cache memory its own cache memory okay if in cache cache memory it is present it will simply given to the web browser and then connection will be established and then data will be transferred and so on everything will be fit and fine but let us suppose it is not in cache memory okay so this uh, you can say uh, the uh, ip address corresponding to this uh, domain name is not in your uh, is not in the cache memory of the resolver so now what resolver will do resolver will simply request uh, resolver will simply request the local dns server okay resolver will send a query to local dns server now address of this local dns server is there in in your tcp ip settings uh, okay so so don't worry you should uh, uh, assume that resolver know the ip address of local dns server that's why it has sent query to the local dns server now local dns server also will check its own cache if uh, ip address is there it will reply otherwise it will send query to server called root server it will send query to root server 
ओके रूट सर्वर इज एक्चुअली आई हैव टोल्ड यू ना टू टाइप्स ऑफ सर्वर नॉन अथॉरिटी सर्वर रूट सर्वर इज अ नॉन अथॉरिटी सर्वर दैट मींस इट इज नॉट हैविंग एनी डीएनएस डेटाबेस ओके सो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इट इज हैविंग सी दिस दिस ट्री रूट दिस वाज द रूट ना सो दैट्स व्हाई वी आर कॉलिंग इट एज रूट सर्वर सो रूट सर्वर विल स्टोर आईपी एड्रेस ऑफ ऑल दोस सर्वर्स whose zone is this these domains like .com .edu .org so whatever server is storing this .com information um, that ip address will be in this root server edu that will ip address will be here org server ip address will be there so root server is storing ip addresses of all these these are known as top level domains okay these all are known as top level domain so for all the top level domain tld top level domain root server is having ip address for all the top level uh, uh, whose zone is top level domain okay yes so root server is storing that okay so it will send query to root server so root server will say i do not know the uh, uh, ip address for the domain name uh, www.google.com but i know ip address of .com server so it will send ip address of .com server uh, to local dns server now local dns server will send query to dot com server dot com server will say i do not know ip address of www.google.com but i know ip address of google organization so it will send uh, google server google server ip address okay now this local dns server will send query to google server this google server will be having uh, ip addresses for uh, for multiple uh, computers na like uh, www world wide web okay there is a plus.google.com there are multiple service which google is providing so for each it is having a domain name like plus.google.com mail.google.com okay www.google.com and so on so it is having uh, ip address of all these so you have requested for www.google.com so it it will simply reply that okay take it so it will send www.google.com ip address okay now local dns server has got it so it will store this first in cache so that uh, it can fulfill the request of other clients also and then it will send a reply to resolver Uh, uh, now this uh, resolver will store this ip address in the cache and then it will give to web browser and that's how web browser will get idea about what is the ip address of google.com okay so how many queries you have made this is the gate question first query second third and fourth there are total four queries to uh, resolve this request www.google.com okay so the very first query will be for the local dns server and if they ask uh, uh, count from local dns server you will count like this first second and third so total three queries okay so if they count about from a uh, web browser or you can say from resolver you will say first query second third and fourth total four okay so why for first is for local dns server first query okay because you have asked this local dns server now second will be dot com second third and fourth now if they say for this abc.xyz.wcw.xwb i have just write it uh, uh, just randomly okay so how you will say so step number 1 will be to the local dns server first then this will be second then third then fourth and then fifth five steps will be needed i think you have got it now so uh, there were uh, two dots in it. that means there were three three uh, you can say words so for each word one query 1 2 3 1 4 the local dns server 4 so here 1 2 3 4 four words are there so 4 1 5 so 5 will be there and a doubt here no sir okay no, okay sir. good okay so this is the working of dns okay so now i will tell you about the Uh, types of queries okay what are the types of queries they uh, so yes now everything is on one slide take the snapshot done uh, done sir okay yeah so let me give you the idea about 
types of query. The very first is reverse lookup query. Reverse lookup query. So this is used for reverse process. As the name suggests, reverse lookup query. These are used for domain to uh, IP to domain. Okay, if you have an IP address and you want to find the domain name, like this IP address belong to which domain? So for that we have reverse lookup query. These are also known as pointer query. Reverse lookup query or pointer query were in the same thing. This is the first type of query. Okay. Next is uh, recursive query. Recursive query. What is the recursive query? Recursive query means uh, uh, whenever client client has requested to the server. Okay, client has requested to the server. So whenever client will say the uh, recursive query to the server, then indirectly or directly client want exact answer. Okay, client was exact answer, either yes or no exact answer that is yes or no 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 means that there is no uh, there is no ip address corresponding to the domain or yes means you just give me the ip address i will not go here and there okay so so uh, in hindi i will say that goli nahi de sakta hi usko direct answer karna padega like this uh, resolver send recursive query to the local dns server now local dns server is not saying to uh, resolver that go here and take the value and so on it is not saying like that so this is the recursive query okay it is recursive query it is a recursive query resolver has a recursive query to the local dns server because local dns server is directly given him the reply now local dns server has requested the root server now root server has not given him direct answer okay root server ne goli diya isko he said i do not know just go to dot com and and ask your question so he sent to dot com he isne bhi goli di he he simply said just go and ask the google server so like this so this is known as iterative query okay so third type of query is known as iterative query iterative query okay so iterative query means uh, client is not expecting direct answer a client is expecting the best answer whatever best answer you can give that is more than sufficient okay so best answer client is expecting best answer client expectation client expectation is not yes or no client is not very strict client is uh, client expectation is uh, best answer whatever is the best that is okay okay that is iterative query so these are the three types of queries so uh, in so here uh, in finding uh, ip address for google.com one is the recursive query and three are the iterative query they can ask like this also to to get ip address of google.com how many iterative queries are done Three iterative queries are done. How many recursive queries are done? Only one recursive query is done. So total queries are one plus three, that is four, like this. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Uh, so I hope you have got it. Take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done, sir. Okay. Next is DNS answer type. how many types of answers are there first is negative answer negative means uh, uh, no ip address for the corresponding ip address sorry uh, no uh, no uh, ip address for corresponding domain name whatever domain name you have typed uh, there is no ip address corresponding to it that is a negative answer okay that is the error message negative answer means error that is no ip for domain name next is authoritative uh, 
authoritative answer. Authoritative answer means, as the name suggests, authoritative means what? You have authority to answer. That means you have checked your own database and from that database you have given the reply. That is authoritative answer. Okay. So you are not an agent kind of person. You are a real person. That means uh, like uh, you want uh, to make driving license. So you are you have not hired any agent. You directly go to the agency and agency has given you the uh, driving license from their own database. So they have authority to give you because they are having that. Okay. Agent is not having authority. Agent is simply copying the information. Okay, so rather I thought uh, the agency has given driving license to the agent and then agent has given you. So uh, you will not say that agent has given you. You will say agent has taken from somewhere and he has managed to give you. So authoritative answer means what? So server has looked up its own database. From that database, it has given the answer. Okay, so if server is giving definitive answer after searching from its own database. Okay. So, for example, uh, Google server replied to the local DNS server. Okay, so uh, see this. Google server has given reply to the local DNS server. This was the authoritative answer. Authoritative answer. I am writing in a running hand just to give you the just to give the hint. Okay, authoritative answer was given by the Google server because Google server has seen its own database. From that database, it has uh, get the IP address and it has given to the local that uh, DNS server. Okay, that is authoritative answer. That is from its own database it has checked. Next is non-authoritative. Non authority means uh, like this. See this local DNS server has given reply to the resolver. That is non authoritative answer. Non authoritative answer. It was authoritative answer from the Google server to the local DNS. Local DNS server is not having info, having any database now. Okay, so it, it has just given the reply to the resolver. That was non authoritative answer. Okay, and the next one is. Fourth one is referral. I think you have got it. Referral, referral, referral answer. This, this was the referral answer. This was the referral answer. Okay. So these two are the referral. That means uh, answer will give you IP address of another DNS servers. Okay. So it has given referral to other DNS server. It has also given referral to other DNS server. So these are the referral. So I hope you have got it. Okay. Yes. So uh, now you can take snapshot of this. Now uh, this uh, diagram is clear. Okay. So this is all about DNS. DNS is over. So now we are going to start the next that is email. Done? Done, sir. Okay. So these are the answer types. Next is email. Okay, email is uh, your e e electronic mail. So there are four scenarios. First of all, I will tell you these scenarios and then we will jump into the exact details of email. Okay, so scenario number one. Scenario number one is you have a mail server. And to this mail server, your computer and sender and receiver computers are connected. For example, let us suppose Alice want to send email to Bob. And these bo both Bob and Alice are directly connected to the mail server. So how they will send an email? So for that, Alice need a program called user agent. user agent so alice need a program called user agent with the help of the user agent alice will compose the email okay it will write the email after writing email this user agent itself will put uh, the email into the mailbox of bob Okay, mailbox means what uh, you can say small space allocated at mail server for each and every person. Like for Gmail, 
if you are using gmail then you have 15 gb space na at at gmail server so same is the scenario here okay so in mail server some space is allocated for uh, uh, in which mails will be stored so for alice also for bob also both will be having the mailboxes so this user agent will put here this is what bob's mailbox okay this is the bob's mailbox so uh, what alice user agent has done with the help of user agent user agent is a program with the help of which alice has composed the email and the same user agent has put the email in the bob's mailbox now whenever bob will have time from it will check the uh, mailbox and for that also it need a user agent so bob will use a user agent with the help of which it can read the emails so user agent is also used to read the email also okay it is used to compose the email it is used to read the email and it is used to send the email in the bob's mailbox if uh, alice is directly connected to the mail server okay this is the scenario number 1 but generally it is not used so take your example are you directly connected with gmail server no you are not directly connected okay with the help of internet you are connected na okay so this is the scenario number 1 and it is not used mostly let me jump to the scenario number 2 take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide done sir okay scenario number 2 in scenario number 2 we will imagine that there are different mail server so its first example was both are connected to gmail server okay so that's why they they both are using gmail id now let us assume one is using uh, a, a mail server uh your google mail server and another is yahoo mail server okay this is google mail server and this is the yahoo mail server and these mail servers are connected via internet and let us suppose bob is connected with google mail server and uh, uh this uh, yahoo mail server alice is connected okay yes so bob wants to compose the email so for that it need a user agent so this user agent will help him to uh, compose the email okay so it will compose the email and this email will be kept on the mail server by the user agent itself okay so this user agent will kept it in the uh, uh, it will kept not in the mailbox it will simply kept it on the google server now this google server will transfer this email from in, uh, via internet to the yahoo mail server okay so for that the, this uh, we need mta message transfer agent okay so we will need mta client mta client will send uh, this email to this uh, 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 mail server of yahoo so yahoo server will have mta server mta means message transfer agent okay so now this mta server will put Uh, the email in the mailbox of alice and uh, from this mailbox how alice will read with the help of user agent so in the second scenario we need try to focus here one pair of user agent and one pair of message transfer agent in scenario number 1 we need only one pair of user agent but now we need one pair of message transfer agent also i, I think you have got it na with user agent bob has uh, composed the email it has sent to the mail server mail server will send uh, google mail server will send uh, email to the yahoo mail server with the help of mta Uh, that means a message transfer agent mta client will be installed at mail google mail server 
an mta server will be installed at yahoo mail server so mta client will send data to mta server so email has been received and then alice mailbox uh, will contain the email and uh, from that user agent will be, will help in and reading of email and so on okay so one pair of user agent and one pair of message transfer agent this is scenario number 2 now let us jump to the scenario number three. Take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done. Done. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so this is general. Now, see, this was very restrictive. Not possible in today's world. Next is uh, all. It is also no longer possible, but it was more general because it is not like that. That both will have Gmail ID. Some is having Gmail. Some is having Yahoo. So both are connected like this. Next is scenario number three, which is more practical now. What we are doing is so this is Google server. And this is Yahoo server. But now Bob is not directly connected with Google server okay so uh, it is connected via internet with the google server that is more practical now okay and this google server is connected uh, with internet with yahoo server but still now uh, your uh, alice is connected with your uh, yahoo server directly okay alice is directly connected with yahoo server directly which is not possible but i am just assuming this is third scenario Okay, so now what Bob will need? Bob will need a user agent to create email. Now this email will be sent to Google server via MTA client because MTA client will push the email to MTA server. So now this Google server must have MTA server so that it can receive. So now this MTA server, now again from this Google server, we have to transfer email to Yahoo server. So now again, we need MTA client. So now Google server will have both MTA server and MTA client. Now this MTA client will push the data to MTA server. Now this MTA server will, uh, you can say, store the email in Alice, uh, Alice mailbox. And then Alice will read it according to the will uh, with the help of user agent. So now what we need? One pair of user agent obviously here you why user agent was needed here just to compose the email and something like that so for that we have user agent we have composed an email this email will be uh, mta client will push this email to google server so uh, at google server we have mta server now this mta server will give uh, you can say email to mta client this mta client will push it to mta server that means yahoo server will receive it now Yahoo server, uh, now this MTA server will store uh, the email into Alice mailbox and then from time to time uh, Alice will read it with the help of user agent. So what we need, one pair of user agent and two pair of MTA. Okay, two pair of MTA client and server. Okay, so I hope you have got, got it. So take the snapshot. Now we will start the fourth scenario. Done? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. So next is scenario number four. That is the most practical scenario. Okay. So Bob, Bob is also very far away from the Google server. Okay and google server is far away from yahoo server and alice is also very far away from yahoo server so now what we need see this so first of all bob will need a user agent to compose the email then we need mta client mta will client will push the data so push the email to mta server MTA server will give to MTA client. MTA client will push it to MTA server. Now question is, is what Alice need? Okay, so uh, pushing is done by client now. 
so now from yahoo server we want to push the email to alice so if i install here mta obviously i have to install here mta client and here i have to install mta server now i do not know when client will send data to server so directly indirectly it means uh, alice will have to switch on its computer 24 by 7 that is not at all possible now user cannot uh, uh, if you want to receive email then obviously uh, your computer is not 24 by 7 on okay so you own your computer according to your own wish so now mta client server will not help here so now we need another type of software called maa or message access agent maa so here we will store maa server and here we will store maa client so maa client will pull the emails from the server so maa is a pull software but mta is a push software mta is doing push and maa is doing pull so i hope you have got it so now scenario number four which is the most general scenario so what we need we need one pair of user agent two pair of mta and one pair of maa okay so now i will i will uh, you can say uh, uh, give you idea about what are these user agents mta ma and so on so if you have used microsoft outlook that is one of the example of user agent okay so there are many user agents available in the market one of them is microsoft outlook take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide Done. Done? okay so what are user agents so best example is microsoft outlook okay and uh, what are the responsibility of user agents first of all it is used for composing email next it is used for reading emails next it is used to reply for the emails next it is used to forward the email and it is used for handling the mailboxes these are all responsibilities of user agent which is nothing but your microsoft outlook okay yes so uh, and now i will tell you about this what are mta and what are maa mta is nothing but your smtp simple mail transfer protocol smtp so smtp client and server now here client and server so this is again smtp smtp simple mail transfer protocol this maa for maa we have imap and pop3 imap4 pop3 pop3 uh, post office protocol uh, 3 means version 3 okay imap and uh, pop3 Th these are the uh, two uh, you can say uh, maa okay hmm. yes so <coughs> huh. so in gate exam they might ask if uh, uh, if you are sending email then how many times smtp is used and how many times imap or pop3 are used so two times smtp is used and one time imap or pop3 is used you sure you have to remember this okay so two times smtp and one time imap or pop3 okay one time imap or pop3 hmm. so i hope you have got it hmm. yes, so you sir. can take huh, you can take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide 
Done? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, few basic points which you should remember for uh, these uh, these protocols. Let me tell you that also. First of all, SMTP. Sir, previous slide it was. Okay. This one. Yes. Sir. Yes. Then. Mm. Okay. SMTP is simple. Mail transfer protocol. Simple mail transfer protocol. So it is used two times, and you should remember few points which have been asked in gate many times. So first of all, you should know that it is connection oriented protocol. Connection oriented protocol. And next important point is simple mail transfer protocol. Now mail can be bigger also, so you have to do chopping also. So for that we will use TCP. So it will use TCP as transport layer protocol. And port number is twenty five. You have to remember this. Many times question have been asked. Okay. Hmm. And see the beauty of gate exam. How they will confuse you. So they will say to send email. I think this question I've been asking gate twenty twenty. I do not uh, know the exact year. To send email, which protocol is used at transport layer? They will give you the option SMTP. So the moment you see email, uh, the first uh, point which will come to your mind is simple mail transfer protocol. It is SMTP. You will take it. But actually, what they are saying at transport layer. So second option was TCP. So this is wrong. This is correct. Okay. So they will just try to twist the question. They just want to check how much you are aware. Okay. So SMTP is no doubt it is used to send email. But it is an application layer protocol, na? They are saying for at transport layer. So at transport layer, I have told you TCP is used at transport layer. Okay, port number is twenty five. Okay. Sir, yes. Yeah. Agar layer mentioned na ho, to SMTP directly. Aha. Yes. If layer is not mentioned, SMTP is the best option. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, I will jump to the next slide. Take the snapshot. Done. There are many other points about SMTP also, but uh, I will make a beautiful table. In that table, I will tell you about each and everything about the application, the protocols, whatever we are studying. So I am just giving you small introduction here. Uh, then uh, I will make a big table. In that table, I will give you entire information. Uh, there are many questions, na? Like it is in band or out of band, okay? And so on, many many questions. So I will cover that in single table. If I will keep on telling for each and every protocol, then it will simply waste our time. It's better in the end I will make a table. In that table, I will give you entire idea, okay? Whether it is stateful or it is stateless, and so on, many questions. So don't worry, I will tell you each and everything. Take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done. Attention. Okay. Yes. So next is uh, okay. I think uh, slides are over. Let me make some slides. <coughs> hmm. POP. POP is Post Office Protocol. POP three version three is uh, mostly used. POP three that's why we call it as POP three version three. Okay. Ah. Huh. So the basic fact is that it is not used nowadays because it will it simply provide you very basic functionality. It is not giving you advanced functionality. It is just giving you basic functionality. That's why it is not used nowadays. And port number you have to remember. Port number is three. So for three binary is double one. Na zero double one is the binary for three. You just reverse it. Port number is one ten. This is the way to remember. Okay. So port uh, pop three. Uh, port number is one ten. 
ओके एंड ऑब्वियसली यू आर हैंडलिंग ईमेल्स ईमेल्स आर वेरी बिग ना सो ऑब्वियसली इट विल यूज टीसीपी टीसीपी एस ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर प्रोटोकॉल ओके यस सो दिस इज ऑल इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट पॉप थ्री एंड इट इज वेरी बेसिक protocol okay it is not providing some advanced functionality it is just provide you basic functionality like uh, you can list all the emails and so on okay so it is not so good next is imap okay let me tell you that take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide then sir hmm. imap is imap version 4 is used nowadays imap 4 IMAP is Internet Mail Access Protocol. Internet Mail Access Protocol. Okay, and uh, it it is also using SM uh, TCP only. It is also using TCP. and uh, what is the port number port number is i think yeah 143 port number is 143 okay tcp at transport layer and port number is 143 and it is used because it is giving many advanced functionalities many advanced functionality for example user can check email header prior to download okay it can search the content it can partially download the email okay and so on so uh, these will not be asked in gate that's why i'm not digging deep into the topic so i just give you information that it uh, it can give advanced functionalities like uh, search uh, search content okay like in gmail you do na search the content okay like uh, you search an email which contain hi or search an email which contain some extension like this so this is provided by imap search content in pop3 obviously this uh, advanced functionality will not be there okay search the content partially download the email partially download email okay and uh, you can check email header Dot 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 etc. That is more than sufficient. Okay, this is all about um, IMAP four. Okay, so you can take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done. Okay. So uh, this is all about email. So in email, whatever we have studied is so the uh, summary. Summary for email is. by default first of all you should know this fact by default you will take the fourth scenario because it is the most general fourth scenario means uh, this is uh, one mail server this is mail server 1 mail server 2 they are connected via internet and you being user a you are also connected via internet with mail server 1 and b is also connected by internet to mail server 2 so from here to here what is used smtp from here to here smtp from here to here imap or pop3 imap or pop3 so two times smtp are used one time imap or pop3 is used okay so these are the basic things which you should remember for email and and every smtp imap pop3 everyone is using tcp as the transport layer okay and you should know the port numbers smtp port number imap port number pop3 port number and so on you should know all these facts properly okay this is all about email ha ah, and one more point is mime multi purpose internet mail extension mime is used to send audio video etc see actually email is used to send only text messages e with the help of email we can send only text messages we can send only text messages 
बट नाउ डेज वी कैन सेंड ऑडियो वीडियो मल्टीमीडिया मैसेज एक्सेट्रा ना इन ईमेल ऑडियो वीडियो इमेजेस एक्सेट्रा विद द हेल्प ऑफ ईमेल सो फॉर दैट वी हैव एम आई एम ए एक्सटेंशन एम आई एम एज मल्टीपर्पज इंटरनेट मेल एक्सटेंशन मल्टीपर्पज इंटरनेट मेल एक्सटेंशन एम आई एम ए इट इज यूज टू सेंड ऑडियो वीडियो दिस हेज बी नाश इन गेट बाई दी वे ओके वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एम आई एम ए मल्टीपर्पज इंटरनेट मेल एक्सटेंशन इट इज यूज टू सेंड ऑडियो वीडियो इमेजेस इन ई मेल ओके दैट सेट दिस इज मोर देन सफिशियंट फॉर ई मेल सो टाइम इज अप नाउ सो इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल स्टडी अबाउट एफ टी पी दैट इज फाइल ट्रांसफर प्रोटोकॉल एंड वन मोर इज लेफ्ट आउट दैट इज एच टी टीपी हाइपर टेक्स ट्रांसफर प्रोटोकॉल एंड देन आई विल टेल यू फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट which uh, regarding the application layer and then we will solve few gate questions also so most probably uh, in the next class we will complete this computer networks okay okay yes sir. okay then so we will wind up the class here itself thank you so much bye bye good night thank you sir